You ready, Mick? What's the story here? <laughs> huh? It's workshop ends and he's here on the phone. He's not even listening to me here. So in for repair today, we have our John Deere 8430. We also have our CVX 175 case tractor. Um, Caleb is at that and he's a front PTO fault where the John Deere thing has front suspension problems. Uh, we also will talk with Mick who is at a Larrington trailer. David is on a Cavernland plow and Marco is on a new, well he's going to repurpose a new elevator. So first of all we head over to Caleb. Yo, less than a volt on that side. Sensor is reading zero. It is indeed. There you go, there's a fed battery died as I was fitting up. Great stuff. Now, so after opening the, or starting the tractor in the technician mode, press all these two buttons while it's start, and then going down to SFA for a suspended front axle, and that's going by it. Then address 3 is for the front left position sensor. So now we're up at 4 volts. 1.7 is the right sensor, so the right opposite of each other. So when one's high, the other one's low, so that's right. The other sensor's only reading half a volt, but I shouldn't be reading about four. And then I go into address 20, which is my calibration. Swill valves are locked. I go into the calibration mode, SCV1. So on the number one swill valve, I press it onto the detent, right down all the way, and then it bottoms out. Hold it there for a second. Then we go up to impose. Pull the lever back and lift up the front axle. It's just doing the calibration to teach us exactly what heights are there. And it says pause. Down is the save icon. Then save. You will see it will come up. Just give me the readings for the minimum maximum which once they're between uh, 0.5 and 4.5 a volt they're correct so everything is right so to read it and it says done uh, that is the calibration finished on that if I stop and start to track it now we should have no SFA 523 fault codes left <laughs> Steering system, and there we go. Did 
2 switch. No suspended front axle fault cords anymore. I'm going to put it into full. Back. Yeah. So there's my calibrated height, and that's that job finished. You ready, Mick? What's the story here? <laughs> huh? It's workshop ends, and he's here on the phone. He's not even listening to me here. Timmy, Timmy, hold on, I'm getting a Timmy, he's getting a roast from here, so yeah. 15, 20 minutes. Bring Timmy back then, 15 minutes, now we get going. Thanks, Tim. See ya, bye. Tim. So last week we had our Manitou in, we had a problem there, an eye leak on the engine side, which happened to be the drain bung on it. Now, Mick, um, you got the old, old one out, did you? Yeah. Oh, fair good day. Play, fair play, yeah. No, it came out dead handy. I'll explain how in a minute. We'll right. go through how it works first. Yeah, okay. This ha because of where it is, it's in a hole in there. If you pull, the, if you had an ordinary bung and you pulled it, you would just flood the tray. So what they do is they supply these with them. They're clipped on there behind the front of the radiator. Well, they're normally clipped, but they keep disappearing here. That there screws onto that and pushes this valve. Well, it's supposed to push that valve back, but watch what happened here. <coughs> And there's where our leak was. So it split. And I was absolutely blessed. My dilemma was getting that out. See, this is brass, so you can't pull out a magnet. Because yeah. if I cut that, that's going to go into the sun because it's spring loaded. But if you look there, see the little lugs? There was just enough. To grip. Yeah, one side to it, pull the, the fitting off. Uh, but now the new one. Yeah, the well, new one has gone to a steel one. That's now, piss for, light. For obvious reasons. I would think so. Yeah. Like, I didn't know it was a rust tighten it doing an oil change or something. But like you don't normally touch that on these. Yeah, but we've seen these in a few mm. engines now. They're just yeah. not on the Manitou. Yeah, but so they're quite this common. is the one from Manitou yesterday. Now yes. we have? Yeah, so, so steel. Gone a little bit higher. Spec. Higher spec on it. And a duty washer. So I'll show you how it works here now. Nice and simple. <clears throat> when I screw that in, you can see the so valve so opening. Yeah, yeah, you can see the valve opening here. And the oil comes out. Through your hose, in, under control, rather than making shit of the tray. Yeah. So I'll get that on. I'm going to change the filter as well. Okay, one shot. There's only 200 and something hours on, but might as well do it. Yeah, when you're in there. I had the oil level, it's, no it's, it's, quite, it's quite handy to access it there with the wheel off, so. Oh, yeah. And that plate. There's a cover plate goes on that area there. The covers the two holes we've opened. <clears throat> but there's a few bolts missing now, and I can't find where they go. I'll, go, I'll give that a wash afterwards. Yeah, we give it a clean as well, you're right too. Because uh, you can see it there, it actually has been leaking for, well, it probably... It's been a month or two. Yeah, it probably has been, and we'll <coughs> be tapping up with eye because the, the manager has been just away. It's just not that simple to... Drop to, it. ...to get in there and start <coughs> doing that. But it's a simple fix. It was, as it, it was, turned out, as it turned out, a simple fix, but... To get out at anything in here, if you look in, everything is seriously tight. Like, if that had gone into the sump, your option is leave it there or take the engine out. It'd be a week taking that in and out to drop the sump to get the piece out. Yeah. <coughs> anyway, happy days. You got lucky this time, Mick. I did. I think you get lucky every time, don't you? Ah, not too yeah, bad. Yeah, you're not Most too bad. bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah not well, too bad. some days you make boobers, but that's life. That's life. Yeah, okay. Well. So, Mick, you can ring Timmy back now. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. What are you doing? You're buying a car here? I'm trying to get a um, fresh car for the wife. Okay. She's driving an old five Suzuki Grand Vitara automatic. Loves it. Doesn't want to change. But with grandkids and that, two door is very awkward. So you're going for the crash way? Yeah, from what I'm hearing from everyone, there seem to be. And Jesus, when you think about one, the amount of them you see on the road is Yeah, there's an awful lot of them. So if you have any comments there on a 1.5 diesel crash way, Automatic. Automatic. Whether you yeah, think it's a good car or a bad car, just let Mick know here, because he is, you know, wants to know, don't you, Mick? Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, there's a lot more electric on now that I've been from, well, familiar, maybe I'll have could, to get could familiar you, with. Could you, could you pull that one apart and pull it back together like the no, Suzuki? Pull apart. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no bother, yeah. <clears throat> right. We have our 7 4 Gavern and play in. Lads making loads of noise over there just as we yeah, start talking. Why is the house away, David? Yeah. Anyway, we're putting two uh, in for a small bit of, well, parts yeah. really, is that it? Yeah, discs were changed in this, so the discs were worn down. Yeah. And bearing was gone on one side here, so. So they put a new hub and disc on it. New hub and disc now, so what we need to do now is adjust. So we need to, so because the last disc, well, we would have been raised up this whole bar. Yeah to allow here but we're going to allow this we're going to run this bar back down into it too rule, rule, uh, rule of thumb was always four your fingers. four fingers about wasn't four it fingers, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. About, about that four or five inches there that's and then the the line of it uh, the so. line of it John. yeah you want to line then with your with your sole plate there on it so we'll work on that now so we, once we adjust them 
we'll get it, but you want to be in line anyway. There is always there. going to be a little bit of play on these, isn't there? Well, there is. A, they have a good bit of work done, so they are going to be a bit. But anyway, as we let him down, he'll probably tighten up into it a bit. So we'll see after that. We'll adjust them up and see. And that's it. But there's new bearings, new discs. So that should so keep, uh, I think, Connor's on this Connor's one. Connor's on this, yeah. this one, yeah. That yeah. should keep him going for another way. Another if, if he wears them ones out now, he'll be. Yeah. He'll definitely be a good plowman after that, yeah. won't he? The makings of one anyway. Oh yeah, no, no, the Connor seems to be going well, and oh, yeah. yeah, good enough. It's new to him. I could take this job over from Connor, so it would suit me. Probably one of the nicest jobs at the farm is actually plowed this time of year anyway. So we'll keep going, head for the road. Of course. So a couple of weeks back there, in one of the episodes, we had the 175 case in for a front PTO problem that it wasn't engaging and we couldn't walk the front chopper. The release here on the front is seized and we got this release burden moving. So that section's working, but now this section here. Right, so the, is, so the solenoid is working. This solenoid this is, is working, working this. the piston's working. Yeah. But now it's the mechanical end of the clutch is seized. Down to the... And if we spin this with a hand, you can see that it is driving through the gearbox. Yeah. Right, so that end is right. It's literally the clutch pack is not pulling in. It's not been locked on. It's not been locked on, so we have to put a bit of oil on it there and we'll just keep walking it in and out and then eventually it will come. Yeah. One chopper. Now Mick, who was there behind the camera, said he did fix, but he didn't actually fix it there. Oh, <laughs> it wasn't stopping. So, yeah, so it wouldn't stop that time. Now it's in, yeah, for, it now it's in for a different reason. Okay, we have it back and we want to go through it again, Caleb. So first thing to look at would be, you said, maybe just check pressures to see that when well, number one was engaging. Yeah, because I'm not too sure with the, the full setup on it exactly, but we have a, a solenoid with oil pressure up here, and it's obviously just moving a piston. And now if there's friction plates, or if it's like some sort of a dog touch or whatever's on it, I don't know what's exactly yeah. inside in it. But this morning, anyways, um, once we engage it, I can see the collar slide, sliding in, but it wasn't engaging properly. I was just listening to clatters and bangs, and it wasn't driving the yeah. chopper now. Well, it did drive it when, it, when we put it on that time when we thought we had it fixed we did it did drive the chopper for maybe five minutes i'd say and then we had a no show then after that so yeah uh, i just turned it off but i wasn't sure i could hear it there was noise coming out of it like a jingling noise coming out of it like with the plates so i wasn't sure whether it's whether there's a problem with the, the friction plates or not yeah which could still be the case but the fact that we never had probably used it before would suggest that possibly not yeah and the other thing is that like the fact that we're having issues with it engaging and issues with it disengaging that it'd be more interested in that than the actual, like the odds of like with the, the slip plates on it is they're probably going to seize up and be stuck solid. Yeah. The odds of them going the, the opposite way is kind of slim to none unless it was actually being worked, yeah. being worn out, which I don't think is the case with this. So I'm more interested in the engagement of it now than the clutch plates with that. Okay. Um, but then again, you'd have to run it and if it st starts dropping its PTO speed or loses drive or whatever, they just have to have a watch at it. So more or less thing is to, bring it out and get a chopper now is what I right. want to say. So the electrical end of it looks okay? Yeah, the electrical end of it. My, I have the correct resistance on my solenoid with 10 ohms and then my supply up to it. So that's, uh, well look, it should do anything with it's running. Yeah. We could have a different scenario. So. so you just have to make it up a lead then, just check out your pressure? Yeah, so on the supply pipe up to it, I have um, fittings made up on just a T-piece put out and I have my pressure clock on it and I'm looking here now at having about 27 bar, about 280 psi. So I'll give it a crack up there and see what happens. Yep. Yeah, so if you come in here Carl, and look in, you can see as it engages, you'll see that, that piston move in and then I put my pressure clock down here. Okay. okay. My pressure is different now this time, so it's another thing to be looking at. The last time I, I was up at, oh no, sorry, I like that the same. So now it is working, and it's engaging, but uh, that's not good, that's not what I want to see right now, because we can try and fix the problem, but it's not something we're going to fix itself, you know.
whatever you find out. More or less, should, well, we're about right. I haven't even got me exact figures as to what we should have pressure-wise, but I'd say we're about spot on now with that anyway, so I'm not looking at anything like that. Um, more or less, just have to bring it out and operate it and see what's, what's see, happening. You can see a bit of smoke over there, can you? Something hot on that, is it? Heat. Bit of heat there. We do have heat. So that's us now, straight away. Now, if these were backed off like that in the past, or if the plates... Like, did this tractor ever do much from PTO work? No, no PTO work. That's at, what I'm saying. Like, I mean, and the last time we brought it to the field, I worked it, and it worked for five minutes, and then... Yeah. So, so we're just probably going to have to do the same again. Well, the fact we have so much heat in it now, I know as well. We're going to be taking that out, because we're not going to be just talking up the bolts and, and hoping for it. You probably have worn plates here in the in the front. Now, let me see. Can you see in there? I can just about. No, I don't have um, access in that. It's no. probably a small job to take that unit out, so it's not. Yeah, definitely not. And I, I can't get any more of a squeeze on the bolts from what I see here now. I don't think. I'll try it first, and then after that, we'll just have to take it out and get plates for us. Right. No, no option really. Okay. So I went to the workshop today. We have an old Herbert elevator. Now we've really just taken it out of the. Well, it's not really the scrap, scrap heap, but it was in storage, David Marco, wasn't it? <laughs> Marco has has a lot of things in storage that he's going to repurpose this into a custom built uh, elevator to take away the soil from the grader. It's not it. No, yeah. So we sent him off anyway, and he went up actually. This man here, it was up in his place. We had a, we have a bit of storage taken off Peter. Uh, big fan of the workshop items actually. He probably doesn't even know he's on it, but he's gone walking there. Um, <laughs> and we're going to repurpose this. Now, first of all, when we got it back, it actually will do the job, won't it? Because it's the proper belt that we yeah. require for it. Chevron Not hit the belt. Chevron belt for yeah. taking up the dirt. 30 mil Chevron. On and it's kind of like a self-cleaning belt as well too, mm. is that it, because it's, it's um, Swan neck. Swan neck on it, yeah. yeah. So, it how, is, well, Mark, what's, the, what's the plan? What's the plan? <laughs> Bearings? You're, you're the manager here. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, no, 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 no. So, <laughs> this is your project now. So, yeah. we're, we're going to start yeah, off thanks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, if you're starting off something like this, you bring it in. Uh, it probably could have done a bit of a wash, yeah, but we said ah, we, 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 we wouldn't wash it. We keep it dry. Now, it is. It's a Herbert which came in the green colour. We're going to repurpose it on alongside the tongue. Mm. So therefore, it'll probably have to get a bit of a yeah, spray up and it'll have to be painted red. So first of all, probably slacking your belt. Mm -hmm. Loose belt. David's going to change plug. This. So it comes oh, here it's with uh, it's a three-phase plug and it's a three-phase motor. Um, and it's probably without a neutral, is it? Yeah, yeah, so you've been yeah. earthing three, you've been earthing three you're, you're phases three here. Three phases there. That's all you have on the four pin. So it does away with your neutral altogether. Yeah. So, so a lot, a lot of the anything around here with a five pin. Yeah. Okay. Any motors or anything like that would be all balanced, so they don't need a neutral. Yeah. So we balance right across the three phases. So that's how that works. So it'll um, we we we'll, we put a five pin on it just for testing it here in the workshop. Yeah. So we need to do that. Put a new stop start on it. We won't have to put a two way in this because obviously with the Chevron. This belt will only work the one way, and that's it. They never run the other way. Yeah, we'll never have to. <laughs> Some of the other belts we have, we put a, a two-way on it so we can change the direction on with just a flip of the switch without having to change the phases here. So you'll have to adjust your heights then. Obviously, this this is completely yeah, it's a lot, lot higher for where it's going to go into. Yeah, but it will go down. We have oh, adjustment yeah. on it. Oh yeah, it goes down. It's easy to go down and up. Yeah, and yeah. I see the likes of these rollers and these bearings here will just probably have to be changed out. Oh, yeah, yeah. Have to go we've, through them, and then we've support rollers on the here, which they mightn't just look the best, but they actually actually do turn. So yeah. when we start it up, then and yeah, that should uh, get it going. Running for a day or two, it's three hours, <laughs> won't it? And a squirt of oil here, yeah, there, yeah. And plenty of oil. And that's it. So yeah. we li we leave you walk away at it, and no time you'll have it ready to go. Yep. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> he gets all the good <laughs> jobs. Okay, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mick, we have uh, what we call a Larrington trailer in here. It's a box trailer we use there for potatoes. Don't use it that often. Probably hasn't been used in Two or three years probably, uh, four or five years, I'd say. Now. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a long time, but uh, we just need to do a job with them for uh, for the time being. Now, of course, when we get the trailer back, we have to pick it up uh, between moving it from one place, one shed to another. First of all, we know faking lights in it. We um, have a job plugging that in up there. So that was never going to work. <laughs> uh, we also have a problem here on the fitting. Now, Sean has to have a look at it yet because when we plug the in. That's rotten. But it's absolutely completely rotten. Yeah, just from the that. So we'll, we'll change that out and put that into it. Now, are you just going to join that? Or sometimes we have, we have sockets for with the, the Zuzi in them and that works really well, except then they get lost. The Zuzi's get lost. Yeah. Mm. No, I'm going to just put a cable, I'm join the cable and put a socket plug up there. Onto, right. onto, onto, Any particular uh, with, say, electrical fittings you use or where do you buy them? We're get, I'm getting this one. <laughs> That's where he's leading. See, I, see I'm leading Mick yeah, into he's something. Walking has into I, it I'm here. walking him into it here because Mick has some. A box, it's a work box with a load of fitting. Now, you'll ne this stuff is like plumbing, you'll never have enough. But of course, I pulled it out of the car this morning and the lid moved and the whole lot shuffled down into the water. So that's why out. he's the mall so organized knee. Two hours the work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, things happen, Nick. Ah, yeah. Having them is the whole thing. Yeah. But there's good quality. And, yeah, the biggest thing with these is inside where you crimp. Some of them are the metal, for the, not if it's paper. Yeah. They're all right. Some of them now are cracking. Look in there. With the, see the body in that one? Well, obviously with the bigger, t with the bigger cables, Tell you are going to have that. Yeah, but so you get a lot of variations in this from, you buy them cheap and cheerful, but oh, yeah. you know, but just quite, disaster. Quite, like over the years, to be fair, N2 or David Rees yep. were, were very good. On, and they were they were dual right in, in David Rees and they were, they were quality. There was strength but they seem to have gone back a bit. Yeah, so we've gone to the work TR just to see we, we kind of deal with them in a few... For it means a, few, of for a few different products, yeah. It means of everything, virtually everything that you're going to need in a box. Yeah. Like even there, they've, they've doubled up on the sleeve on that one. I don't know if you can see that. But the more steel you've in there, the better the crimp you're going to get. Yeah, obviously. but a good, a good tip is always to close the box before you put it away. It was. Yeah, so it then, was then closed, then, but then with it the pulling spare. and dragging, if you're that the that the wolf this morning. See the way it clips there, look at that, mm. Mick. That's, that's some that job, for? isn't it? What's that for? Huh? What's that for? What's that for? Lock symbol. Yeah. Is it for locking the box so all the parts don't That's fall out? Saying. This is all the parts don't <laughs> fall out. He's going to get mileage out of this this morning. Okay. Correct answers there. Send them on to us out. So that's it for this week's workshop. And so don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And yes, we will have a video out this weekend, just a bit of a catch up on everything that's gone on on the farm in the last number of weeks. We have been quite busy and Cahal hasn't probably had time to get powered up. But uh, yeah, it's a good long video there, so stay tuned to that one, and that's for the weekend. So from over here at Finnegan's Farm, we'll talk to you all next Wednesday.